Sports. It's in the game. Can McCaffrey do it again? Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, dual threat Christian McCaffrey. Fresh off a big game a week ago. Coming up, we'll see the visiting New Orleans Saints taking on the Carolina Panthers. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Carolinas and Bank of America Stadium here in Uptown Charlotte. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. They come off a disappointment last time out that put an end to their modest three-game win streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Saints, they've been flawless all year long as they hit the home stretch at 13-0. And now they just have to guard against complacency. You still got to go out and earn it every week. It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in Week 15. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the first pick of the second round back in 2001. And that's the veteran Drew Brees. And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, <laughs> he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. Now it's Ingram. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. On second down, Ingram. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Here's Ingram. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive. Couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Defensively, here are the starters for Carolina coming into this one ranked number 19 in the NFL against the pass. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. This is Ingram. Unable to corral him. He fights through. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a pickup of 16 there to the lead to a new set of downs. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this. And, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to want it. I didn't offer it. mine. You, know, you, were, you were the <laughs> smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. 
Ingram. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. They've got it first and goal at the seven. And they'll run it here. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up a shot. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Saint touchdown. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, Remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. Lutz good on the extra point, and that makes the score 7 0. Lutz now to kick this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, and none other than Cam Newton. Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a receiver? Newton on first down. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Call it a three-yard game, and it'll be second down. And here now the offense for Carolina. And it was too bad that last season for Greg Olson, their tight end, and a foot injury plagued him and limited him to seven games played. Broke his streak of 1,000-yard seasons. But he'll get back in form. One of the best route runners in the league. A combination of strength, guile, smarts, and a little dash of speed. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. That's rock now. That's it. 180. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. All start offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Set. Draw play as Newton gives to McCaffrey. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. He lost two there, and it's third down. That could not have been played better by the defense. Totally clogged up the middle when they tried to run the draw, and as he broke out to the right, the rest of the defenders just ran straight to the point of attack and finished him off. And before they can get settled in here, time expires. All the first quarter of action. 7 0 is our score. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company.
With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. Out of the gun, Newton. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. This is taken at the 15. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. Out comes the Saints offensive unit and the NFC playoff race. Let's have a look at it. And it's right about this time of year you start to say this is when the cream rises to the top. Week 15, three weeks left to go, but still plenty to be determined. And I think for most teams, the obvious is to try and be the number one or number two seed. But when you look at it across the league and in throughout the history of trying to get to the Super Bowl, the teams you really fear are the ones that get hot and sometimes sneak in at a five or a six seed because we see those teams actually get to the Super Bowl and occasionally win it. Yeah, you think of the Giants a couple of times. Steelers have done it. You're right. It has happened and will happen more in the future, I'm sure. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. And they'll go with the ground attack here. Oh, and now he bowls him over. There goes Mark Ingram. The 20, 10, touchdown, New Orleans. Mark Ingram. His 14th touchdown now on the year. And the Saints are able to strike quickly for six. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Lutz to try to add the PAT. Lutz with the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this show. Poor punter. Yeah, it, 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 it wasn't his fault. Hey, okay, listen, there's got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. So they have the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. On second down, McCaffrey, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Cleo Mack's starting to get a really big-time reputation as a pass rusher, and rightly so. So explosive off the edge getting to the quarterback, but he doesn't neglect his run duties as well. How about that tackle right there? Such a package he has, able to play the run and the pass so well. Set. 
Throwing on third down, Newton. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. Here's Michael Pilardi now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he fields it cleanly. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. And he's closing in on that number that all running backs circled beginning of the year, the number 1,000. Could do it on this drive. And you have to think to yourself, at this moment, Getting to this spot, it started in the offseason, right? Not just the workouts, right? Not just getting yourself physically prepared to play, but mentally, as well as your team, as well as your unit, head coach, offensive coordinator. We run the football. We give you opportunities. He's taking advantage of it. And when you get this close to the mark, you just hope things don't tighten up, right? You probably want to get there and get it in your rearview mirror. You really do, don't you? Because now it becomes predominant, and you wonder about play calling as well. Do you want to call plays to get that out of the way, or are you still calling plays to win the game first? That becomes the burden of the play caller. And they'll go on the ground. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Easy. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. his way forward here for a good little game. Set, set. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And they'll run it here. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the nine-yard line. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. And they'll go with a ground attack here. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And he is not going to get through here on try number one. They stop him at the goal line. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Another shot from the one on second and goal. They'll try to run with him, and he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Saint touchdown. A great effort there as the first half is winding down, and the Saints add on to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. 
He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Lutz good on the extra point, and it's now 21 to nothing. Lutz now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. Just 11 seconds to go in the half as they have it first and 10. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll get our tour started out at Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago, where it was the visiting Packers who were able to come in and win this one on the road. Aaron Rodgers leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. From there, let's get over to the Rockies to check out the Broncos at home in Denver. And they were losers in that ball game to the visiting Cleveland Browns. Baker Mayfield over 300 yards through the air with a touchdown pass as well. Finally, let's get right to the center of the U.S. map and check in on the Chiefs at home in Kansas City. And they were losers in that one to the visiting L.A. Chargers. 20 to 13, the final score. In our game, it was the right arm of Drew Brees that led the way in the first half. His guys have a three touchdown lead as we're about ready to go into the second half. And to get you through it, we give it back to Brandon God. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time, we give you a look at what's going on there. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because... We often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs. Run some plays. Run some clock. The ball's out. McCaffrey lost it. And this is picked up by the Saints. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. They may have the edge on the scoreboard, but that hasn't made them passive, has it? I mean, they've, they've dialed up a pretty good run blitz there. And, and, and Brandon, you know that all blitzes aren't just designed to get to the quarterback and the passer. Sometimes you're just trying to take away every gap every hole that might be created in the running game and they did it to perfection and caused a fumble there took away the gaps took away the holes took away the football it was eric reed in on the stop third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now call it a gain of a couple and that's going to leave them with a third and about five Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. And it would appear Sean Payton's made the decision here. They will go for it on fourth. They'll run for it. It's Ingram. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. 
Breeze hands to Ingram. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. And the offense moving quickly to the line. They toss to Ingram. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. A toss play left. There goes Mark Ingram. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. We've seen this offense go for it on fourth down already on this drive. I wonder if they'll go for it again. They certainly wouldn't rule it out with these guys. They're running. Ingram going absolutely nowhere. He'll wind up losing a yard or two. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And the Panthers will get the football back. Well, they knew who to turn to on fourth down. Their horse, they needed the short yardage. He just couldn't get it. And that's a surprise because normally... That's bread and butter for them, right? Hand it to the big guy, let him go, pick up the first down. Didn't get it there, all credit to the defense. Usually, even if they know he's coming, he can't be stopped, and they got it done on that play. The all-pro in two positions, Khalil Mack there to make the stop. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here's Newton now on second down. Over the middle complete. That's Moore. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Just a two-yard pickup, and that should necessitate a call for the punt team here on fourth down. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. It will go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt, six on the return, and the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. And with the day he's having as we look at some of these highlights, Maybe he wants to duplicate this pregame meal next week. Whatever it is, guaranteed he will ask for the exact same thing each and every week as long as he continues to run like that. Sometimes it's that simple, partner. Yeah. It, you, know, and you know how superstitious these guys can oh, be. Oh, there's no doubt, right? If you put your left sock on first and you have this kind of game, you'll keep doing it. In this case, let's investigate that pregame meal. We might need some of that. <laughs> yeah, right. It's working. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Tackle made by K1 Short. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. It's a give to the right. Ingram. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. And now it'll be third down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Here's Thomas Morstead now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Carolina offense making their way out. We take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. Pulled the punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. 
What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. To throw on second down is Newton. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. The Panthers on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and 5. Ready. Ready. Yes. They'll run it now out of the gun. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Try it here. He's back to throw. And he finds a man. It's McCaffrey. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. I don't think what we just saw there was any surprise because when Christian McCaffrey came out of Stanford, we knew he was a threat running it and catching it. And any way you can get the ball in his hands, he wanted to do so. Personally, I thought he ran the best routes of anyone coming out of his draft class, and that included the wide receivers. Last year, 80 receptions, also in the return game. He's a bit of a Swiss Army knife, isn't he? He certainly is. Every which way you want to go, however you want to package him, and I do think his running production will increase in 2018. Newton out of throw. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs gonna throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're gonna have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw, luckily fell incomplete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. And caught left side, Olsen. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Ready. Ready. Throwing again is Newton. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. McCaffrey with a first down and more. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. A great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Panthers are able to cut into this lead. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to play drive that one ate up a little more time than they were hoping you're exactly right and if you have that one to five play drive you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield they got the touchdown but it's almost like uh, yeah yeah you know it doesn't you kinda, feel right exactly you know the extra point and they'll cut the lead to 21 7 so that drive 80 yards nine plays two scores down three timeouts left still a chance if they can somehow get this one back And the Saints hands team able to rein this one in. 
And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. The Panthers are going to use the second of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. week despite not having any interceptions try to come up with one there could not but there's a stat category called PBU pass breakup that's important too and they got one yeah there's no doubt about it because at least you're there knocking the ball away oh they get to the football it's blocked it's picked up a live ball here remember those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air, because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy. Gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field to try and get up and get it. To throw is Newton. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Sheldon Rankins in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. On third down, Newton. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Got to be careful here. They need to move quickly, but it's also fourth. Desperation time. Newton, fourth down. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it would appear that the Saints are going to win this football game. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Ingram again, a first down carry. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Breeze gives it up to Ingram, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Captain Munderland, the one who made the stop. Breeze now to throw. Complete, and we're down to eight seconds now. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The offense going to stay out there. They've converted once, failed once. What can they do here on fourth down? Ready. Ready. 
And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Marie's going to go on fourth down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. One last throw here for Newton. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Von Bell, and they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Saints, they move ever closer to the perfect regular season as they run things to 14-0. And they will head home next week to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meanwhile, for the Panthers, the loss might knock them out of playoff contention as they drop to 6-8. And, and they'll be at home for one next week as the Atlanta Falcons come to town.